Hi, and welcome back to my channel. I was just working with a financial institution, imagining various use cases where they could leverage AI. First step in evaluating where companies can start their AI journey. We want to get all our use cases out on the table, and then we went through the use cases, reducing them and down selecting them to the most viable options and the options with greatest return. This client's in the financial services industry, and we came up with over 20 opportunities to leverage AI. Let's run through the list and discuss briefly how each might benefit the organization. First, just a quick introduction and a disclaimer. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a vice president at ARG, and while I work for ARG, this video is my own and does not represent the views or opinions of my employer. This channel is dedicated to helping business leaders make great technology decisions, and understanding how to establish an AI roadmap might be the biggest technology decision that an organization is going to wrestle with over the next couple of years. We're already beginning to work with clients and assessing their AI opportunities, and I thought I'd share one process that we're going through with the financial institution. This is going to be a little bit of a list, so I'm not going to get into too much detail on any one of these options, but it might give you an idea as to the scope and breadth of all the various uh, alternatives that the organization is considering. Again, this is for a financial ins institution, so your results may vary. We started by identifying several categories that were strategically important to the client. The three major categories identified were efficiency, risk management, and compliance. In the efficiency category, we identified the following AI opportunities. So the first was contact center automation. An example of contact center automation may be if someone is calling in regularly and their primary reason for calling is to, let's say, check their bank balance or something. By using an AI platform, you could automatically serve that information up to the caller each time they call in, reducing the amount of navigation that they have to go through uh, in the, in the um, contact center platform, and certainly eliminating the need to talk to a human uh, individual, a human uh, contact center agent. Another option is using their voice as a password and automatically authenticating them. Again, this helps them avoid keystrokes on their phone. The next option is implementing virtual agents. When people call in to an AI-based contact center platform, the platform can automatically serve those customers without ever engaging a human agent resource. The next item was real-time transcription. Now, within the, call, within the call center, contact center, we want to be able to document each call in a text format. That makes it searchable and allows us to do analytics on those conversations. Next is fractionalized labor. Now, fractionalized labor is not a solution unto itself. It doesn't really have anything to do with AI, but it can enable, but AI, sorry, can enable fractionalized labor strategy. Fractionalizing labor, and that's essentially hiring people for very short periods of time, maybe as little as two hours for a shift to help staff peak volume time periods. Rationalized labor strategy can benefit from an AI platform in that the AI can recognize the fractionalized labor resource and learn what types of calls they can handle and provide real-time training during the, uh, the course of the call and essentially skill that irregular worker up to be much more productive, much faster than we can do today. The next item is lowering decision-making intervals. Say someone is applying for a loan a car loan, let's say, being able to make a decision on that car loan and assign an appropriate risk-based interest rate in a matter of seconds, rather than having it go through some sort of management approval or something of that effect, can really drive significant efficiency gains. The next item is to automate tasks and data propagation within the, um, within the systems of the financial institution. So these organizations have many databases where customer information is housed. It would improve efficiency if that information could be propagated through the various systems automatically and intelligently as new data is brought into the customer's account. The last item under efficiency is digital advertising. In a marketing capacity, being able to use generative AI to create digital ads under a variety of different topics allows marketers to be much more strategic and test many different ad executions to determine the most beneficial ones for the organization. So those are the eight use cases in the efficiency category. Now we'll take a look at risk management. Well, we could use AI for credit assessments. So people are coming in and applying for various credit vehicles, like a credit card, and being able to assess them automatically and intelligently 
um, helps us manage our risk. Fraud detection and malicious transaction identification is next. The banks process thousands of transactions, sometimes millions of transactions daily. And being able to look at every one of those transactions and evaluate it and score it for potential risk or fraud would be an amazing opportunity for them to manage fraud risk. Market risk and portfolio management is the next item. So some banks keep loans they originate in a portfolio. If a bank is keeping a portfolio of loans on its books rather than selling them to Wall Street or selling them to one of the government-sponsored entities that facilitate things such as mortgages or college debt, for example, being able to manage those portfolios, those, uh, those internally held portfolios and assess them from a risk basis and from a market basis in real time would be a huge benefit as well. The next item is stress testing. Banks have to undergo various stress test scenarios, and an AI platform could be programmed to immediately identify a potential source of financial stress under a variety of scenarios, as well as coming up with its own scenarios. Essentially, rather than having the bank test a bunch of different, uh, uh, different scenarios, the AI could inform the bank management as to which specific scenarios the bank would undergo various stressors, being more proactive, for example, than reactive. The next item is customer segmentation. Banks have many, many customers that pose different opportunities. Being able to segment those customers into different risk categories allows them to approach each customer interaction in a much more intelligent fashion. The last one in the risk management category is customer performance scoring. So evaluating customers in terms of the payment history, credit usage, bank interactions, et cetera. And by looking at a variety of products and services that the customer might consume from the bank, this allows the bank to approach their customer service in a much more intelligent and risk-informed fashion. So that's the risk management category. The last category is compliance. This comes into some specific regulatory frameworks such as know your customer regulations that have just come out relatively recently. And those are aligned with the anti-money laundering and counterterrorism regulations that we have here in the United States. You might have different frameworks if you're in another country, but almost every country has some sort of financial services regulatory compliance requirements that uh, the institution has to monitor and that there's also reporting that goes along with those frameworks. So not only will the AI platform or AI solution help you comply, but it'll also help you generate the reporting artifacts that are required to demonstrate your compliance with the regulations. Next item is that compliance management. Um, so how does the organization manage its risk with conjunction uh, or in conjunction with complying to these regulatory frameworks? Let's be real. All regulated uh, organizations take on certain risk with their compliance. AIs can help weigh the risks and be more systematic in identifying and minimizing the organization's exposure. The next item is real-time monitoring and auditing. Monitoring is generally considered a real-time activity, but auditing, auditing typically uh, happens after the fact, and it's based generally upon a sampling rather than being able to look at the entire universe of transactions. AI, it looks you, uh, AI allows you to look at all of those transactions, that entire universe at once in real time. And then the last item under the compliance is training and skill management being able to monitor training and create training to enhance skills and track recommended or suggested various training courses for employees as they progress within their career. So as you can see, over 20 different potential use cases for a single institution, and I'm sure there are many, many more use cases that we didn't identify. The process we take with this client or with any client really is to go through these use cases and identify the ones that are of key importance to the organization. Evaluate which ones already have solutions, whether they're AI enabled or not, and which of those solutions are working for the organization. And also which ones don't have solutions. Maybe there's an immediate need to solve a problem that hasn't been addressed for the, for the company. Going through and understanding what the financial and economic variables are to consider is a really important next step as well. We'll evaluate the options under various value considerations and then make a recommendation getting down to a very short list. Maybe two initiatives over the course of this year is about all a typical organization might be able to consume. Again, your results may vary, especially if the initiatives are in different departments. Two, maybe may uh, may the 
minimum that you can do. You might be able to do much more than that if uh, if, if the programs are widely separated. So we're going to have to distill all these different ideas down to a very small number um, to identify actionable uh, initiatives. And that's how we approach evaluating a client's ability to leverage AI and its operations. If you have any questions or want to find out more about how these cases are developed, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is in the description of this video. And if you got some value in this video, I'd appreciate a like or a thumbs up. That helps this video reach more viewers like yourself. And if you want to return to this channel in the future, the best way of doing that is by hitting that subscribe button. That will allow you to find your way back here at your convenience. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.